I'm John Caldera, president of the Independence Institute and your devil's advocate. Later on, we're going to talk about the national popular vote. But first, somebody who used to be somebody. <laughs> Suzanne Steyer was the deputy secretary of state. And now you're just sad and lonely and unemployed. It's just terrible. What an introduction. You are one of the best lawyers when it comes to... Uh, campaign finance laws in Colorado because they are this jumbled mess of spaghetti and no simple human being can understand them. So they need to hire people like you to sift them out and put all the strands back. Right. How bad, before this session, how bad were the campaign finance laws in Colorado? Um, they, were, they were pretty Byzantine. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of ins and outs and um, yeah, not, not anything I think a average candidate could walk in and understand. Or an average supporter who wants to help out a candidate. There are many cases where somebody was just trying to help a candidate or a cause that they liked. Before you knew it, they stepped over some line they didn't even know was there. Yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of lawsuits in Colorado over people who are truly just kitchen table neighbors who get together to try to talk about an issue. And as soon as they raise $200, they fall into this abyss. I mean, it really is crazy. You raise $200 for a cause just because you want to help somebody out or help out a cause or get and to express yourself, and you could lose thousands of dollars uh, just by trying to be an active citizen. Yes. I mean, we had a mom in uh, uh, Byers, I think, in the school district out there who ended up suing uh, the state because she was taking out ads in her local newspaper. Uh, talking about Common Core curriculum and how she didn't like it, and she put her kids in another school district. And uh, coming up close to an election, uh, she ran one of those ads about who was and was not for Common Core. Superintendent filed a complaint against her. One of the school board members filed a complaint against her. She spent about five thousand dollars in attorney's fees before it eventually got dismissed. She never got her money back. She said she'd never speak in elections again, and the federal court then threw out campaign finance enforcement in Colorado. Think about this. There's a woman, whether you agree with her or not, it's a woman who said, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not even going to bother being part of the process. All right. With that as a backdrop, it all got fixed this legislative <laughs> session uh, with a lot of help of our new Secretary of State who wanted to have more transparency and make cleaner elections. And three interesting bills passed. So let's, let's take them one at a time. So Jenna Griswold, our new Secretary of State, who's, who's quite, a, quite an activist, what, let, let's go, which one, which one do you like best first? Well, we could start with campaign finance enforcement because that one got thrown out by the federal court and so there was a gap in how you enforce it. Well, her, her solution to this was that she would take complaints, she would investigate them, then she would be the hearing officer and then they would come back to her to enter a final order. And so now she investigates, she gives orders, she does everything in terms of campaign finance, and I think we've seen how that works in a partisan sense already. For, for people who might not know the ins and outs, and I've run enough issue candidate or issue campaigns that somebody says, ah, oh, you are violating the law, and they put forward a, a complaint. It goes to the Secretary of State where you know, you've, you've worked before, and the Secretary of State goes, hmm, complaint, and sends it over for what's known as an administrative law judge. Right. So it's my job as Secretary of State is to be, as a functionary, to do this to somebody else. Right. Now under this law, and tell me if I've got this right, the complaint comes and Secretary of State goes, hmm, now there's, no, there's nothing here, go away. Or, hmm, I want to look at that. I think I'll investigate this. Right. Or I'll investigate it and I will judge whether or not there was... I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm not a lawyer like you, but it seems like due process means that somebody else should be looking at that. Yeah, absolutely. And not only that, she gave herself audit authority too. So now she's going to not only just take the complaint that comes to her, she's going to go find, you know, on a nonpartisan basis, <laughs> the, you know, committee she wants to go after. And so that's a real problem too. So the committee again would be, you know, citizens against referendum CC or something like that. Right. And so she gets audit power. What, what does that mean to a layman like me? Well, nobody really knows, but it means that she can say, I want to look at your committee's records. And you can say, 
I'm a 501c4 and I don't have to reveal my donors. And she can say, well, I want to see whether you truly are uh, complying with IRS laws and I want to see your records and I want to take a look at your financials and your donor list. And she now, under this new law, has the power to do that. She has the power to ask you for them and if you refuse, she has the power to go get a subpoena to do it. Yes, she has the power to do it. That's insane. Now, I wonder if this legislature would have would have voted the Secretary of State that type of unchecked authority to look up people's skirts if Scott Gessler were still the Secretary of State. My sense is they would never give Scott Gessler that kind of authority. No, I mean they wouldn't even give us the authority under Wayne Williams to appoint our own, and not even our own, but to have a committee appoint a group of hearing officers that would only do campaign finance. They said that that was too close to the secretary's office and now not only is it not a committee that's going to appoint the hearing officers, she's going to do it herself. It's a lot of work for one lady. It is. People are going to hear this and go, wait a second. There are people there trying to hide money, and we just want to know, full disclosure, who's putting money into politics. And this is just a vehicle to do that. What do you say to them? I say, well, there, there are other ways to do it that would have been nonpartisan. I mean, if that's truly the direction they went, they should have created a commission like we wanted to create that would have had representatives from Republicans and Democrats uh, looking at it more like the Federal Elections Commission does it so that people could have confidence that it's not being used for partisan purposes. It, it really is. It, it's, it's amazing that this happened. Did, this, did the governor sign this? Oh, yes. He signed it. It is law. Yes. Give me the next one in this long line of, of, of hits to our free speech. Well, if you want to just talk campaign finance, she also yeah. um, did another one that uh, she calls the Clean Campaign Act, which... How could you possibly be against a Clean Campaign Act? Well, I mean, the way she did it, again, it talked about uh, nonprofits, and so uh, that's going to be her, her focus is going to be on nonprofits and whether or not they are contributing into campaigns and trying to get back to donor lists of nonprofits, and so that's in that bill. Um, I'm honestly, I'm not sure that bill really does a whole lot. It talks about foreign influence, so if you are incorporated in a, you know, a overseas and you can't contribute to a campaign, I don't know that that was going on anyway. Well, the Independence Institute is a 501c3, and you know we're we're incorporated in Trinidad and Tobago, and Tobago just just for safety. Right. You know, you know, as a c3 organization, we have never released our donors for a lot of reasons. One, we take stances that a lot of people don't like, and there is retribution for people who give to that. All the way back to the NAACP, organization said if, uh, the only way they existed was to protect their donors. And the NAACP, if people found out who gave to them, they would be hung. And so that's why the NAACP was always so careful about this and protecting donor integrity. We have teachers who might give us $50, and if their school union found out, it would ruin their lives. Um, or I'll go the other way. I remember the shooting down in Colorado Springs at the Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. If that crazed guy could just say, I'd like to see who your donors are and their home addresses, then uh, maybe I'll, I'll take my gun someplace else. There's a reason for this. Um, what, what happened to, to privacy that you could express yourself and still feel safe? Well, I mean, I think it still exists, but I think it's going to have to go to the federal court. Um, but it's probably going to take her filing a complaint against a group that, um, you know, truly has concerns about their donor list coming out to take that into court and try to get something done with it. But, I'm, I mean, right now it's law. Uh, the governor signed it. And, uh, you know, we all have to live with it. Didn't one of these bills the governor not sign and just let it become law without a signature? I don't remember which one that was. I'm not sure because I looked them up on the final draft. And, and they all it signed? looked like he had signed them to me. No big signing ceremonies. Oh, okay. no, there were no signings. Why, why no big si signing ceremonies? Well, I think that the, you know, the groups on the, on the left have concerns too. Um, you know, groups like Progress Now, groups that um, engage in political speech on a regular basis have concerns about releasing their donor lists. Um, so I think that the governor probably, I don't know. You, you keep know. using this term partisan, that, that this, is, this is going to help their team. This is going to help Democrats. This is going to help Jenna. Um, 
And I don't think there's any doubt about this. When you give a secretary of state that type of unchecked power to subpoena and audit people and organizations without going through a, a, a judge, that, that's, just, that's just crazy. And decide which complaints to follow and which complaints not to follow. Why will I not be su uh, um, surprised if those investigations go one way? The, um, Jenna's cozy relationship with Planned Parenthood, that she needs to run her press releases through Planned Parenthood. If someone files a complaint about Planned Parenthood, how fair do you think she's going to be about looking at that complaint? How do we know that she's going to be fair? Well, we don't, and there has been a complaint filed against Progress Now, and there was a complaint filed against the website Colorado Polls, and in both those cases she was asked to recuse herself, and she declined to do so, and then she found in their favor. And so the track record so far is not great. Uh, the only complaints that have gone forward have been against some unaffiliated candidates that uh, ran in the 2018 election, and uh, they probably spent more on attorney's fees than they ever raised uh, going through that process. So, The third bill. Did we cover the third one yet? What's the third one? I don't know. You said there were three bills. I did? Oh, I did. Oh. Then. All right. So there, if somebody is going to get involved in expressing themselves, not, not even getting involved in vote yes for this or vote uh, against Bob, what is it that they need to know? <laughs> what, 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 what is it? What is it? What is the main pitfall they need to worry about? Why? Why do we keep having to hire experts like you? And what? What is, what is it you're going to tell us? Well, I think the main pitfall is if you spend money, then you probably are better off registering and reporting that you spent the money. If you get with other people to spend money, then you need to, you know, think about what the ramifications of that are going to be and whether you need to register your committee and reveal your donors. So, if there's something going on in my town. And, um, and it's coming up for a vote on the city council or on, on the ballot. And I, as myself, just want to run an ad in the paper to say, I think this is a bad idea and here's why. And it costs me $201. And I just do that. What do I open myself up to? Well, who knows there, because all the cities have their own laws, too. So it's not just the state law you have to oh, worry about. Oh, let's make it a state, it's a, okay. it's, it's a state in, thing. If it's in the state, then you need to register as a small donor committee, and you need to um, you know, track and make sure that you don't spend more than 5000 because as soon as you spend 5000 you need to reveal your donors. And So I can't put out an ad myself if it costs $201 on a state issue unless I register as a committee. Right, and then disclose that you paid for it. I've often said that because of the way the laws are written, um, as soon as you like mention a candidate, you have to um, disclose who paid for it. Um, if you do it within 90 days of an election, you spend more than $1,000. And so I would often joke that I'm going to make sure none of my daughters, if I'm ever a candidate, get married close to an election. Because if I send out that announcement, um, I'm going to have to disclose at the bottom that <laughs> I paid for it. <laughs> I, I paid for it. That's the other part of this, is now we have an arbitrary date. This is the other part I, that helped me understand. At some point, I can talk about issues, and I can talk about people, and then the next day, it's verboten. Right. Just like our founders probably intended. Yeah. What is that date? Well, now it's 30 days before the primary, all the way through the general. So 30 days before the primary, up into the general, my speech changes completely. Yes. Even if you're not in a contested primary, yes, it changes. As soon as you talk about that candidate and spend $1,000, you have to start disclosing. People need your help. You are good at this. <laughs> if you want to avoid the, the traps of this, this is the lady to talk to. Suzanne, thank you so much. Thank you. Stay tuned.